Hello and welcome to The Great American Witch. Um, as you can see, I am not Lydia. I am not the half arse hermit at all. Um, I am scribbling penny usually, scribbling dribble over on the internet um, and the community manager for um, Weave the Tail and the Penny for Tail Network. So this is very last minute and we are sorry for the late start, but tonight we are gonna do a very impromptu um, Q&A of the cast. And if it shows up, we will also hop into The Great American Witch. So it is gonna be all amazing, all random, all glorious tonight. Uh, um, quick, a word from our sponsors. This season we have, you will see them in the Twitch chat, but, um, we are sponsored here on Weave the Tale, if I could actually spell things, um, Christopher Gray, who does The Great American Witch, as well as Broken Dice Games, um, Arcana Media, we have um, Evil Hat Productions, Black Void Games, and I believe, and Mora as well, that does um, the Ravenswood Academy. Um, hopefully I got them all, but enough about me um why don't we go around introduce our cast and if you guys have anything um throw it into the chat and we're just going to kind of have a very chill laid back conversation tonight so let's start with um anati the riddler hi uh hello everybody my name is d and i play anati rossford here um and uh yeah excited to do like a q a i'm glad that you clarified that you weren't lydia because i was gonna i was confused so i was like did you dye your hair or, or there, there was a lot of so... changes <laughs> yeah okay gotcha gotcha uh and then i'm gonna pass it over to my good friend val wrong way this way oh there you, there go. you go hi That's wow up. i just got i got prompted like um yo what's up i'm val I'm a dinosaur. Elegant and, descriptive um... as always. <laughs> uh, I'm a dinosaur, a velociraptor very specifically, and uh, normally I play, um, what's her name, Sylvie? Sylvie. She is a hag witch. Yeah, Sylvie, she's a hag witch. Uh, she's very tall, very precise, and uh, I get to my best dinosaur life through her, so... Mm. <clears throat> I'm gonna make I'm gonna make Rendis go next since we're now like prompting people. This is like I'm going right. around the circle. <laughs> well, hi, I'm Rendis of Party Wipe Games. I normally play Marcus, the uh, Hecate uh, aligned uh, witch, uh, with my partner Naneshka. Um, I don't have anything fun or important to say other than I am fully immunized with my Pfizer vaccine as of last week. Except for the realization that as soon as I got it, they told us we might need a third one. Woo! <laughs> Progress. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> well, the, the, the Pfizer people were like, you might need another one in a year. And it's like, great. <laughs> well, at least it's in a year. You yeah, might. it's in a year. You don't have to. It, it, it's mm -hmm. basically like just the flu, be a flu Like the flu shot. shot. Yeah, like the yeah, flu yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how so it's this, is, this is for the rest of our lives. <laughs> uh, so I'll get <laughs> yep. over to uh, Satan. Hi everyone. Uh, if you didn't know, I'm Satan. That's my nickname on the interweb. But you also <laughs> may know me as Less of Amp. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to um, be here anymore. I'm scared. <laughs> um, listen, it was started off as a joke, and it just took 
took off um and now people know me as scene uh but as so usually i'm i'm here playing Danishka, uh the hecate which partnered to marcus uh but you know today uh we're just gonna be talking about what we're doing uh i guess and i'm very excited to know what kind of questions people have and not only viewers but i would like to know questions that each other have for each other that'd be cool that was just sam your reaction to that was just <laughs> everything that i wanted in the world like and now to satan excuse me what? excuse me <laughs> um, okay. I, I, I didn't you know realize what? that there was a celebrity in chat <laughs> it's me it's you that is uh, that's generally how people know me on the internet look i even have an emote i'll post it in chat from my own Twitch. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> See, I was just like, oh, Alyssa Vamp, and then it was like, no, this is Satan. I'm like, I'm I'm well, sorry. My, like my ass me. Alyssa Vamp, but the 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 use the, the little name you can switch is, has been Satan since I started. Uh, and I figured I was gonna change it eventually because it was a joke from high school, and high school's been a long way away for me. Uh, and it just stayed, and people are like, "No, you're Satan." And I'm like, "Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll go with it." You know, that is no. a very important title. Like, not everyone yeah. can be Satan. No, exactly. I have people I, tell me every time I, I, I have a friend in chat, they're like, Hail Satan. They're like, oh, I have your Satan's number on my phone, you know. Amazing. <laughs> Satan, not need So I number. think, like, you have to, like, DM it to me at some point. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so smooth right there. <laughs> Duh. This is all tonight is going to be just very. We're just gonna gush over Satan and try to flirt very badly, um, okay. and I think it will work. Oh, please do, please do. Yeah. So it's just like a normal session, basically. Exactly. <laughs> just a normal game. Just a normal game. Yeah. Just a normal game. It's fine. What yeah. Come to expect. Absolutely. No, and that's like what I've really loved about seeing your guys' streams and clipping all the little gifts from it. It's just like. You guys are such a close knit sort of group um, that your interactions are just so easy that um, I don't even know where I'm going with that. But you guys are have been so fun and great to watch this season. So it's been a treat for me behind the scenes. Oh, thank you. It's definitely been a blast to play. So I'm glad that people uh, people enjoy it. Yeah, I am just glad that Lydia took this on. Um, she glanced over the pdf and she's like this is my kind of fuckery and i'm gonna do it and i'm like yes please any show that says the great american witch ran by a scotsman is gonna be great so please do it yeah mm -hmm. um i think one thing i love but, about our group is like i only knew val go coming in i didn't know rindis or 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 riddler so uh it's it was so quick feeling comfortable in this group and feeling welcomed by them that I just, I loved it. It, it was great. Yeah, for sure. Aww, all the hugs around. Um, so yeah, chat, just again, if you guys have any questions, um, this will probably be a shorter session tonight. Go ahead and throw them in the chat. Um, but other than that, do you guys, um, so last session was just Anati and Sylvie, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it was part of um, Alfie's funeral. Um, lots of tears. It was kind of heartbreaking to um, go through that. If there was anything that you could like say to the other two members about that session, like what would you guys kind of do um, or say to them? It's my hard question. Um, see, <laughs> um, uh, well, the idea of reincarnation went into Sylvie's brain for a hot second that she wants to talk with everyone about, um, because they do, as we have established in canon, know where Phoenix is, and if the stipulations is that, uh, you know, Afi has to be alive. 
they're like if you know if that's the only specification for this deal right. then uh, what is a lie you know, yeah witches so, have certain ways yeah. to circumvent that yeah so uh she thinks of nine non-violent options before she thinks of violent options because you know She'll kill you. I was just straight up gonna. <laughs> uh, I was just straight what up gonna should... call their witches and be like, "Let's fuck some shit up." Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just... Let's just ruin the day for everybody. Yeah. Let's just, <laughs> especially that one poor child in the record. Yeah. Store. Don't don't talk about <laughs> ruining people's <laughs> days. Uh, <laughs> this... Very. That Listen, poor can I just, uh, just wait for you? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't point it out publicly that that might be my favorite scene that has happened in this entire game. <laughs> it is just like Marcus. My favorite part about it is just Marcus like no selling it, like having no reaction to it. Just being like, yeah, your uh, grandma wants to talk to you. My grandma's dead. Grandma uh -huh. needs you. <laughs> and then drinks from a flask and goes, yep. Well, anyway, have a nice day, kid. <laughs> just yeah. like, Marcus, like, have, have a good fuck? life with that knowledge. <laughs> like, yeah. Marcus oh, is man, the, the type great. of mentality that if I have to suffer, other people <laughs> have to suffer as well. <laughs> I'm miserable, so you'll be miserable with me. Marcus is that one friend that people outside of the friend group thinks that he's like, oh, that's the non-chaotic one. And it's like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> like, don't that's, that's the one who just beer. lies and wait. That's the one who just waits yep. for their particular brand of chaos. Marcus is like a chaos. Marcus is like a cat. Like he's gonna knock over the vase, but he wants to make sure you're looking at him first. Otherwise, what's the point of knocking over the vase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. so perfect. Yeah. I feel um, just seeing Rendis role play. He does that so well with just like the stony faced, very like <laughs> flat sight thing going in. I'm like, I would be laughing my ass off and. Marcus is, or Rendis is just sitting there and I'm like, how is he doing that? So props oh, to man. you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So good. But yeah, um again, no prep for this, but um I guess I'm just gonna kind of go with some very generic questions and kind of have you guys go around and say like what your favorite part besides um marcus with that kid like what's been your favorite part about this season so far and this system oh man probably just do the same clockwise order for each of the questions i would imagine mm -hmm. um yeah. yeah but uh <sighs> It, it has to be the, it, it's got to be the, we've gotten to a point where we feel like a coven and that, mm -hmm. that progression felt like it happened like in the game. It wasn't just like we dropped in and it's like, we all implicitly love and trust each other just because we said we did when we made our characters. Like it feels mm -hmm. like it's been, you know, there's, there's record of all the, all the stuff that happened to build those relationships. I think I've liked that as a continuing theme throughout the game. Mm -hmm. That was so good. Val, what about you? Yeah. Um, I, listen, I am not the type of chaos that lies in wait. Um, it is <laughs> out where everyone can you see in say. the open. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so the fact that y'all can just fucking roll with it and that Lydia can just roll with it always just I understand that I am a lot <laughs> like, and the fact that uh, it, it is nice to just be with people who are also a lot but don't overshadow I don't feel like I, I overshadow any of you because you're also all a lot and but like I'm saying this in a very <laughs> positive way, <laughs> like this is a compliment. I like that. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, coming into this is definitely one of the emotional games that I've been in, and um, it's it's just nice to be involved in something that hits on some real emotional chords. I had a pretty tough 
couple of months. Uh, my grandmother died in October, so like having you know my make believe grandmother die hit, but in the good way. Um, cat died in February very suddenly in my arms, so it was been having to come here and sort of um, uh, have a catharsis without it feeling like work has been very helpful, and I just love you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, I I've already going. Oh, sorry, I figured she was done. I am done. Going. <laughs> Okay. I'm just I like know, I, I don't wanted... think I could talk. <laughs> yeah, I, I took the I took the pause as the go. I apologize. Um, I, I've used this answer before uh, on an outro for favorite scene, but my favorite scene has to be just being me, Marcus, to Naneshka, um, because seeing <laughs> Naneshka's character growth uh, through her personal demons and then the payoff of her overcoming that later was great mm -hmm. and it's always fun when you get to have a indirect hand with it but still just kind of like you know getting that message from Lydia of just like are you okay with being mean to Naneshka tonight and it's like yes I can do that <laughs> <laughs> I can be mean hold on <laughs> and so I, I like I like that and it it just it's always cool seeing real character growth and payoff in a series like this because usually mm -hmm. you know even these shorter games, there isn't a whole lot of time to do those things. So when there's payoff, it's always amazing. Um, that's, that's That's been... Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, from this game the attention that Lydia has put on each character without feeling like one is taking the show from the other. Um, and the way even with the way we improv and it feels so natural, like all of my reactions to what's been going on, especially with Naneshka, has have been genuine. Especially when Marcus was like starting, he was saying some things, and then he's he got real mean, and I was like, wait, wait, what? Uh, so it's all been very natural, um, and the way. I, I, it's not often that I am in a serious game where I get to kind of like show that part of me as a player uh, and I really really in actually enjoy it so this game has been uh, really fun for me even though it's been emotional uh, but I just really love how the characters have come together like uh, Dee said uh, and start trusting each other and they start being there for each other um, through all of this and I think there's been character growth for everyone. Marcus is kind of starting to trust people more, despite being the, uh, no, I don't want any friends. I see <laughs> death everywhere. Uh, and, I, and I say, I, I make fun of that with the most love uh, possible. Um, and Sylvie being very hard to kind of like empathize with people sometimes, or like the way she does, it doesn't come across. Uh, and I think we've all kind of grown to understand that in game and just with Anati it's been such an amazing ride with her trying to find herself and just the whole group while they are dealing with their own things separate things kind of being there for each other and growing together it's it's this game I know we said it was going to be fun and light in the beginning because that's that's what Lydia is she's like oh I want a fun and light game I want to find a light game. None of us allowed. Show. Like, we all agreed to it, but none of us allowed it. Like, so exactly. It none of us allowed it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Shakespearean to her core. She lives yeah. for the tragedy. She has to. Uh, it was amazing though, and and the because she, she always she's always very it's like, hey, are you okay with this happening? How are you feeling? So mm -hmm. uh, it we just all agreed to it because uh, somehow we all got together and we're all the same type of players that enjoy this, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And this show has been amazing. And I'm gonna stop now because I'm just gonna keep saying the same thing that this is amazing and I love you all so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, in case you guys didn't know, this show is amazing. So, show is amazing. <laughs> it, it is. It's, it's amazing. It's on. That's gonna be the cool. title of this, not Q and A. This show is amazing. Please go back and watch up all the every Monday for this show. 
every Monday, and Mondays suck, but they suck a lot less because the show exists. <laughs> like, That's so. so true. Thanks, thanks, we use. Yeah, it it's so good, and I love that this game is just so role play centric. It's not like you guys are crawling through dungeons and going, you know, the battle mechanics mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It is really about like that relationship building building a coven together and um that sort of growth so i mean you guys have been exemplifying it and especially i believe like in the early episodes um you guys like i believe it was with sylvie we're having like um, a discussion it's like this is how you're properly supposed to feel about things um and kind of having like a very interesting discussion that way and Mm -hmm. please correct me if i'm wrong um Mm -hmm. but yeah i mean you guys have definitely been helping each other grow um Mm -hmm. but with sort of these funny little things intertwined with it uh yeah but yeah that is that it's been it's Um, i think the the system itself really lends itself to those kind of role-playing situations it's it's really well designed mm-hmm. and i i don't know if it's more credit to the system or just lydia's uh storytelling style but the the ability to our our spells can kind of do anything like there's no like you know what i mean there's no upper limit mm-hmm. to it it's just um so there's you know a lot of <clears throat> a lot of trust put into the into the hands of the players themselves to like guide the narrative i mean spending a charm quite literally lets us guide the narrative like Lydia's like okay mm-hmm. tell me what happens in this scene and it's it's really cool to play with a system that sort of propagates that and promotes mm-hmm. that in its rule set it's, it's uh it's good it definitely Fun works time. very well considering I know that all four of us are also game masters so like we ha- don't have a discomfort with like Lydia's like it's time for you to take the reins of the narrative like we just fall like fall naturally into that role most of the time that it's very cohesive between her narrative and ours if like it's all the same narrative mm-hmm. yeah oh uh, that um i have not had the great honor of playing in anything um with lydia but just watching her shows like one day I really, that's on my bucket list, like my lifetime bucket list, playing a game with Lydia because she, she is absolutely amazing with her storytelling mm-hmm. and just like she makes you feel like you are there and she describes things so like poignantly that mm-hmm. um, you can't help but like invest yourself in your, into this character that you created because you're like in that world. Mm-hmm. So uh, props to Lydia, like. Props to Lydia. I'm just sucking up to Props her. Props to Lydia. Lydia, Props yeah. is just, you're amazing. Uh, she watches this back there. Uh, I, I will say uh, when I told a friend of mine uh, that I was going to be playing on the channel and and he asked me who my GM was going to be, I was like, oh, uh, half hours, half hours are hermit lydia and the first reaction was like oh you're going to love her she's amazing she's great she's a great mm-hmm. she has a great storyteller literally first words that came out of their mouth when i told them it was lydia so uh i have uh she has lived up to that and uh it's amazing it's her storytelling uh abilities are amazing and i'm in love with them yeah and it carries across genres too because watching her last season um run D D you know, completely different sort of fantasy yeah. and then going over here, more modern um, urban type of fantasy. It's just like, she knows no bounds. She could do anything. So mm-hmm. yes, <laughs> we're just going to gush about Lydia now. Um, <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah, yeah. But since you guys are all um, GMs, you guys have all been in that seat, right? Um, mm-hmm. What has been, what is a tip that you guys would give to people wanting to sort of step into that role um, and become more than just a player and go behind the screen? Oh, boy. Don't try and not be nervous because you're going to be nervous. I i am a professional GM with two separate companies. I've been GMing for 
five or so years. I've done it far, far more than I have as a player. And streamed or not, like, if it's just you and friends, you're going to get those, when everyone looks at you, like, okay, what happens? You're going to have that that nervousness build up in you. But, you know, as soon as it starts, then you're just playing D&D. Like, you know, you're, you're just playing TTRPGs. You're having fun with friends. Like, that's... If you fo- focus on that more so than anything else, then you'll it'll fly by. Mm-hmm. Not exactly. I feel like, um, at least when I'm GMing, that you get caught up in what you think is going to be, like, you you are your own worst critic. Um, and some of the sessions that I have thought were the worst were some of the ones my players thought were the best. So, yeah, definitely echoing what Dee said. Um, sorry, I interrupted you, Val. Go ahead. Oh, um, by the way, hi, Humaloo. Also an amazing GM hey. in chat. Uh, does oh, their yeah. Dragon Age games on Saturdays. Um, uh, as far as like my advice when it comes to uh, one, just fucking do it. <laughs> like, just just do it. Like it. Like people are gonna be grateful first of all that you are running a game for them, um, and if they're not, they can leave your table. Um, and the second is um, the kind of like I, I've 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 done all kinds of different versions of storyteller storytelling. Um, I'm a filmmaker by trade. Um, so my whole thing with it is that I consider my, my world is my character and it's a live, when I GM, it is a living, breathing being of existence and, um, I am in charge of playing that character and reacting and improving with the other characters on the, on the, um, during the game. So that would be like a, a, a piece of advice that I would give. Like your world is your character as a game master and everyone in it, like that is your character. It is living, it's breathing, it's dynamic. Um, and it reacts to the characters just like your characters react to it. Yeah. Oh, damn, I feel like I should be taking notes. <laughs> that was I really mean, good. There, there just scrub back to this. like, like 27 Whew. minutes. Like, <laughs> So good. What about you, Rindus? Um, I would say uh, don't be afraid to embrace the player's bad ideas. It's okay for them to fail because it's very much just like for doing improv. It's yes and, no but. Um, and, you know, you can say no, but have that, but here's what happens so that they can keep going. You know, let them work out their bad ideas let them fail but fail upwards and you know be their biggest supporter um you know make sure that you know you're rooting for them too so that they don't feel like the things that are happening are antagonistic because there's nothing worse than you know ah their terrible plan resulted in a tpk and then they feel like you we're punishing them on top of it. It's like, no, I really wanted that dumb plan to work, and I'm surprised the dice were were not with it. It's like that sucks. Let's try again next week. You know, mm-hmm. make sure that they always feel good afterwards, because then they don't start doubting. Because, like like uh, Val said, it, and uh, uh, D said, it's you're your own worst critic. So it's you know, don't you don't want them turning on you too. So make sure that you're supporting them, and they'll support you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's perfect. And then just going with the yes, but to keep it kind of going. So that's perfect there. Satan. (laughs) Just going to say that now. Because I keep saying all the hell Satans in the chat now. (laughs) Uh, Feel free to do so. I have no issues with that. Uh, My biggest tips that I've learned as a constant GM for one group is first is that it's never you versus the player. It's never the GM versus the players. It's This is a cohesive uh, type of storytelling. While uh, they are in the campaign you're running, the module you're running, or the homebrew world that you're running, they're not characters in your story. They are the story. So let them, let them change your plans. Let them 
um, uh, improv, whatever they want. Let them create stuff in the world. Let them feel part of it, like they're making changes to the world, even if it's not what you had in mind, because uh, it's not homework, it's not school. You're having fun with your friends, and they're there to have fun. Um, and second tip is improv. Uh, nothing's ever going to go to plan. Uh, because we're counting on the uh, the random dice rolls and learn how to flow with that. Just because it didn't go to the original plan that you had, it doesn't mean it's gone. It doesn't mean it's ruined. If your players didn't get to go to one sec session that uh, section of the area that you're in that you wanted to, you know, reuse that, put that somewhere else, uh, and make up something on the spot. Uh, really work on improv because that's. Uh, what a lot of TTRPGs are uh, because like I said the players are creating the story so wherever they go there's going to be something that you didn't plan for and that's okay and sometimes that's even better than what you have planned for I, I, I figured that out uh, uh, the games where things never go to where I I expect um, are some of the funnest sessions that we've had and now I don't really prep much. I have three things that I want to happen in the session, point A, B, and C. And whatever happens in between is up to the players. And I'm fun. I'm always happy to go along with what happens um, after what they, where they wish to go, what they wish to do, who they wish to talk to, and stuff like that. Uh, that is perfect. I remember when I first started GMing, um, I would write it out so detailed a uh, basically like an adventure path um of what i thought was going to happen that session and it was like 10 minutes in i'm like yeah no this this isn't gonna happen at all completely derailed so <clears throat> echoing that i definitely just do point a point b point c yeah. have some bullet points a guideline um mm -hmm. and then we're on the races but yeah, yeah. don't and over I think prep <laughs> Yeah. I, I think I think everyone starts like that too, where it's like you you feel like you want to have everything like prepped down to the wire. But I I find that any time that you're going to put into prepping, like these monsters are going to come out of here, and then this person will say this. If you put that same prep time into development of the world and the characters, the NPCs, then I I find it works out almost even better because people will. It, you you won't have to like plot out what they're going to do you can just have that character react if you know the character well enough the players can do anything and you can just think to yourself well mm -hmm. how would this npc deal with that and then you know react accordingly and it's um i, I find that it leads to a more like not even just an immersive experience but just uh, it's it's easier on you as 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 the gm mm -hmm. to have that bit of leeway in uh in the in the preparation stage yeah um one thing i don't know if this was lydia or if this is part of the um the book by christopher gray um having when you guys first started those sort of prompts for your characters and to answer them for your character if you guys remember that um basically I thought that was a very interesting way to develop a character instead of going by, you know, those stats and that sort of thing, but mm -hmm. to be sort of answering questions. Um, do you guys feel like you kind of stayed on what you guys had originally written or has it, have you guys sort of derailed yourselves with how much you've progressed and gone along, if that makes sense at all? Man, Anati is. I I guess technically I have, but it it hasn't really played out in the way that I intended. Um, like the 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 core ideals are still still there, and she's still the character that I came up with originally. But she's definitely like the way she interacts with people has definitely been shaped by just the other players and you know Lydia's description of NPCs as a guide like that that has kind of shaped 
your character. And I think it's important to like leave room for your characters to be affected by the world like that. Cause that, that is a big part of what can make stuff feel cohesive is players allowing their characters to be a part of the world rather than having their characters be in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have, I've kind of stuck, Sylvia sort of stuck to my original idea, I think, of what I was leaning into. There was a lot of, about her that I didn't quite know until, um, until I started to, like, play her out, like, in that first session. Like, we had an in-character session zero, um, and that helped shape, but, like, that first session was just, like, when she really came alive, and I started kind of pulling from different i you know there are no original ideas everyone i'm just pointing that out there there are just different takes on other people's ideas um, that is a professional tip from a filmmaker <laughs> like so don't worry if your idea is not original believe me someone else has done it and they will keep doing it um so do it yourself anyway but um i found a lot of kind of inspiration um from the like as i was playing her the way that she was acting i found a lot of inspiration from um the character tempers brennan from bones with a little bit of a mixture from one of her um interns uh vincent nigel murray uh kind of like a combination like kind of looking into like the personalities of someone who is very scientifically minded and whose empathy comes off in a different way than other people but her not understanding how people don't understand how um it's like i'm being empathetic this is me being empathetic how do you not understand that <laughs> like and not under like understanding that something is happening not understanding why something is happening um is okay with not understanding why something is happening but she has been pretty true to how I've imagined her being. Um, and I think it's just becoming like, it's coming out a little bit more strongly in these later episodes. So yeah, I think I'm sticking to some of those prompts that were given to me. Mm -hmm. um, when I uh, made Marcus, uh... I had very much expected him to be, uh, like was mentioned, where he's just too serious, very dour, not very fun to be around. And uh, with everybody talking about keeping the ideas open for growth, uh, I kind of had that same mindset. And people like D rub off on you, <laughs> and you can't <laughs> not take in that positive energy. And it was definitely a lot of growth for Marcus because of Anati um, and because of Nineshka. Uh Sylvie was there too, but Sylvie was kind of like the other side of the same coin where it's like they can be too serious at times. And so they played off well together, but then the other two in our coven bring out the best in them. Um, and, you know, case in point, traumatizing the small child, uh, that probably wouldn't have happened if he hadn't gone off with Sylvie. <laughs> um, you know, so uh, the rest of the coven definitely made him grow as a person. And I think that that's a lot better than what I originally had planned for him. Um, I think with Doneshka, I had a very vague idea of what I wanted her to be honestly was just ready and prepared to play like a whole ass dumbo uh that was a bartender um i actually have gotten used to just preparing a few things about a character and then seeing how they take form in life during the game um and with uh the things that we've come up for Naneshka, it's it's been very different than what i expected but in a good way i I didn't expect uh, her backstory to come up as it did, or change as it did, or grow as it did, and have it affect her so much. Um, but it, uh, it was such a, a an amazing thing to see how Lydia brought that to life. Um, 
and I just expect her, uh, her to be a very supportive friend uh, with some anger issues. Um, but like the party has um, really brought up more out of her as a character that like she, I feel like she's definitely a lot more serious with Marcus. Uh, and even though they, I think we, Mar uh, Rindus and I agree that there's very different sides to a Hecate witch. Um, but I feel like even though she's serious with Marcus, it's, they're so different, but kind of work really well together. And I think that's why we have them work at the mortuary, uh, together. And with Sylvie, even though we haven't been able to see a lot of interaction between Anushka and Sylvie, um, I find it really interesting how uh, Naneshka is a lot more emotional and Sylvie has a much more control of her emotions in a way. And how uh, Sylvie... I love hearing uh, how Sylvie talks about what has happened because her, her actions have a certain reaction of other people but when she talks about her thoughts and feelings it's like completely different she's like yeah no i thought i was being supportive this is how i am supportive this is how i show them that i care about them and the other was like oh i don't think she cares um and uh with anati like i didn't expect them to be so close to kind of be so supportive of each other uh, but that relationship has been really beautiful to see, uh, and I just never expected these different sides to Naneshka to come out, uh, but I am so wonderfully surprised, um, uh, by how, uh, they have grown as a character, and they are very near and dear to my heart now, uh, and so are all these characters, um, and I know a lot of people say that about a lot of characters, but I've played a lot of characters. Like, you know, if they die, I have backup characters. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. these characters are very near and dear. And I think it's because we've seen them grow. Uh, they've taken maybe some unexpected or expected turns that we really enjoy. Uh, and yeah, I think I, I, I ranted and went off the original question. But yeah, she has changed. She's been different from what I expected, but I love it. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. What is uh? Sorry, guys, this internet today. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Also, Lydia the gremlins are about on Discord. Ooh. Yeah. Um, Lydia is not feeling well. Um, so we are just gonna go ahead and continue with the Q and A. Um, and end it at the hour. Um, hopefully she gets some rest and feels better soon. Feel better. Um, yeah. But if I if I could pose a question to y'all, um, mm -hmm. what would you say is your favorite moment that had nothing to do with your character? Like so, like thus far, the thing mm -hmm. that your character like wasn't really pre present for. Sylvia, I, I would count Marcus's traumatization of the young child to be like that. Like <laughs> you were there, but you weren't really a part of that. Was there. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. Like, for moments? me, it was definitely the exorcism. Like, that was, I was so invested in just, like, watching that play out between the two of you that I was like, I am so happy that I'm only a part of this from watching it because um, I don't know if that's, uh, to be cathartic in behind the scenes than being in that moment because mm -hmm. uh, ex-Catholic, y'all. <laughs> like... Mm -hmm. There, there are some things. So, yeah. yeah, I loved it. It was great. Sure, for sure. I, you, I always liked watching uh, Anati interact with people. Um, always just coming at everybody at 11, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and whether it was, you know, seducing somebody or just being high energy on the radio show um i particularly enjoyed watching the interactions with the with the ghosts um you know and same thing as as a hecate which you know dealing with the dead is something that interests my character so seeing somebody who didn't specialize in that the way naneshka and marcus does was fascinating to watch 
and it was one of those things where I, I had asked at one point, it's like, do we know about this ghost child? And it's like, no, no, you don't. And it's like, oh, the mystery deepens. I want to know more now. You know, why Anati mm -hmm. isn't telling us about this child? And when we found out more, it was great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I have... Uh, I think I have a moment for everyone with Marcus. It has to be the tra the, the traumatizing the kid. It's just it tickled me so so much. Uh, it's my favorite part um, with Sylvie. Um, I really enjoyed the conversations she had with her cousin when they went out uh, and how she played it off so beautifully um, in getting information and not giving information. And seeing that kind of leader capability out of Sylvie. Um, and with the Nazi, I really enjoyed uh, when she was in her water tower and she was talking with Prudence. And it was the whole Prudence mis means wisdom and, and having all these flashbacks that that was such a, a captivating scene for me that I really, really enjoyed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good times. I think my favorite scene for Sylvie and Marcus has to be... <clears throat> I have not been more on the edge of my seat in this game than when y'all went to talk to Sylvie's cousin. I was like, oh, she's gonna find out. She's gonna find out. Like, this is gonna yep. go to hell and we're not gonna be there. Like, oh, God. Um... And then I, there was something about Nineshka's like late night conversation with uh, Cassius that I, I really, really fucking liked. Like, just the there, there was like, there was an understanding there that I feel like went deeper than like surface level character traits. You know what I mean? Like, because Nineshka mm -hmm. and Cassius have pretty clashing like presentation styles and just ways that they are in the day-to-day -day life but like having that sit down moment of like i i get it like yeah that that was i really 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 enjoyed that it's good times notice the common thread here is uh obviously lydia she's the best of us of course she's the best <laughs> yep. of us that's true just like being able to bring all your guys' personalities and everything into an amazing story um Yep, Lydia is absolutely amazing. Um, do you guys have any other questions that you'd like to ask each other? Yes, I have a very important one. All right. Oh, boy. Y'all, if your characters had to be isekai into another world, which one would they be best in and which one would they do worst in? If you don't know what isekai is, it is a trope in Japanese anime where you are like in your modern normal world and then you are whisked over to live into another canon like another world like so any like like when i say this it's like would they do well in days of our lives is what i'm asking <laughs> <laughs> or not i think but... anati would thrive as the protagonist of a harem anime <laughs> and i think she would struggle <laughs> yeah. most and I think she would struggle most if she was misplaced into like a cyberpunk future. Like she would just be lost. <laughs> like she would just be like, I don't, I don't so like it. So she would do great in Oh My Goddess and terrible in Ghost in the Shell is what you're saying. Exactly. Yes. Exactly okay. that. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um. Well, uh, you know what. Um, just because I had my girlfriend watching it recently, Marcus probably would fit really well in Overlord, um, for that same isekai, uh, his fascination with magic and being able to, you know, just be a witch puts him at an edge, just like, uh, Lord Ein's. um, and then on the flip side of that, he probably wouldn't do well in the harem anime. He would just be terrible. <laughs> he would be terrible at it. And then there would be the one person who does like him, and it would just be another delightful himbo, and he would be happy. Yeah. God bless. Aww. Uh, Naneshka would do horrible in a soap opera, because her solution <laughs> is just violence. <laughs> 
Oh. If, I'm sorry. Like most soap, soap operas, that is a solution. Like I don't. Like, and she couldn't deal with the drama though, with, with the misunderstandings and the miscommunications, <laughs> and that oh my god, you hugged someone, so you're cheating on me, and she'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think she'd do really well. Uh, fuck, what would she do really well in? I think she'd do really well in any, like, kind of high fantasy, or even cyberpunk. I think she'd do really well in cyberpunk, to be honest. She not the really not the game, well but a cyberpunk. cyberpunk world. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I think she'd be ready. She, she wouldn't even have to stop being a bartender. She would just, like, <laughs> No. Need, like, yeah. That's what, about what about Sylvie? Sylvie? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, as far as Sylvie, she would do excellent in MASH. Like MASH is her favorite TV show, so she would so she knows everything about MASH, so she'd be able to like live it out without even changing any of the storylines. Um mm -hmm. she would probably do really bad for obvious reasons, or maybe not obvious reasons, but she would not approve the shenanigans of the Dukes of Hazard, okay? She would not approve the <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> like man. she would ruin those young man's lives. <laughs> like... yeah. Uh, I was also, no, I was I just also can't, sticking to, yeah. Go ahead. I just can't stop thinking about this game as a dating sim where you play as a Nazi. <laughs> oh, it is just a dating sim. Yeah. yeah. You guys have figured it out. It's how, all in the back of the that's book. Like, <laughs> that, that's like a Nazi vision. She just walks around like and sees everything with like the romance HUD from a dating sim. Yeah. They all have their own like yeah. subtitle boxes, and they're and they appear exactly. as like the little uh, stylized uh, drawing. Oh, that'd be amazing! Be amazing. I wish okay. someone would draw that. I might no, after I'm my sorry. classes are over. I might. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I also, I have a request from all of you at this point in my life now, and maybe mm. you will approve of it. But somehow, because we chronologically place in 1979 do you know what was released in 1979 mobile What's suit that? gundam somehow oh, wow. <laughs> like, somehow somebody has got to have like Some get their connection. hands on this first gundam i episode. feel like nanesha <laughs> would be so into gundams oh absolutely like so into them Same. It's like, oh, we're gonna collect these models. Let's do it. Yeah, that's <laughs> like... that's gonna be the 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 bonding thread between Sylvia and Nanesha's Gundams. Next episode, like, cause Sylvia likes okay. building episode. things. It's like, oh, yeah. let's do it. So Lydia, if you're listening, <laughs> Gundams, Gundam, throw this in there. Yeah, okay. just make a note just... here, Gundams. <laughs> that in the, the the chat and Discord. That's what's gonna happen there next go. episode. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um VCRs I think might have been a thing. Beta did, beta max was for sure. So we'll see. Like, too young. Man, I am like, what was released in nineteen seventy nine? I'm like not me. I don't know. <laughs> not, not me. <laughs> not it. <laughs> I, I'm not no. old enough, but uh, my mom is a boomer. Hide it. So, <laughs> like, 1979 is actually when she got married. Was it when she got married? Hold on a second. It was, like, 79 or 78, her and my dad got married, and then, like, seven years later, it was me. That's, so, that's when but... my parents were born, so it's just like, okay. <laughs> so young. They were this young. Great. I just had, like, the worst thought, like, ever. Like, Rindis and I apologize. My brain went to, oh, so your parents are within dating age of me. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they might be, but, you know, like, that's but still not no, very... that's... <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm the worst, but that's where my brain went. It's like, oh, 1979. Oh, goodness. That's, that's within my range. But 
<laughs> like, I'm not dating anyone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just, just sorry, stop. Sorry. Somebody Brain stop. There we go. My, my, folks, my folks were born in 69, not 79. Oh, then they're uh, not. Get them out like of that I was, doing, I, was doing my, I was doing my head just, math, just, and I was like, wait, oh, that's not right. They would have oh, been thank 10 you. because... <laughs> thank you. You saved your parents from... <laughs> Yeah. Like, from you know, the parents of the internet have never met the, their their virtue preserved but that's <laughs> okay. it, it's mood huh. because i've got a youngin playing in our sunday game val that she popped in for uh for things from the flood and mm -hmm. we have to do 90s references all the time and they're like i don't know what this is <laughs> and it's like oh, no. oh it's got like a youngin youngin huh young yeah, yeah 90s. He's, he's 20 oh, so he's oh, like man. he's like i don't know what any of the things you're saying are and it's like that's fine i'm just uh, gonna keep making these references for us old people <laughs> like i so made the, i made weird. the joke that uh a character's band was going to start Lin uh lincoln park before lincoln park did <laughs> because it's 95. <laughs> I was like, I was like, when did when did Limp Biscuit come out? Oh, one year from now. Great, they can get a jump on oh, that one wait. too. And they're like, what's Limp Biscuit? It's like, oh, you child. Oh no. <laughs> we're yeah, unfortunately just... we're still about nine years away from Green Day starting in 1979, which makes me because yeah. I love Green Day. Mm. The Offspring yeah. were 1984. What? I'm sorry. Yeah, that Offspring's one surprisingly <laughs> old too. Yeah, they just came out with new music recently, so I was super happy about that. But still, the Red I'm Hot the Chili Peppers are 1983. Usually... We are very. That's close. a very relatable story, horrendous, because I'm the one who mm -hmm. usually gets slapped with the uh, the 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 youngin stick. I'm always the young one because I was I'm born oh, in '97, no. and uh, I always so get slapped always with the youngin like stick. The... I was born in '96. I'm so old. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, Val. Uh, at the same time, we gotta say what our birth years are. Uh, I'm okay. I'm 88. <laughs> oh, but... I'm 85. So I'm I'm 85? clearly the oldest. Ah, so I'm I'm, thir I'm, th I'm 35 years old. So let's just yeah. like I am not ashamed yeah. of this. <laughs> Look at how I'm not worried I'm about it. I just get, I just get reminded yeah. of. There's like three young people that rotate through our channel, so it's like mm -hmm. they're like 20, 21, and 19, and it's like, oh, I feel old. <laughs> yeah. I my uh my first cousin who's born the same year as I did, her her oldest just turned 15, and I'm like, mm-mm. 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 Like, no, we're it's not old enough weird. to have 15-year-olds. Oh, wait, we are. <laughs> like, kind of thing yeah mm -hmm. uh, so if anyone can play did, a ttrpg um, yep sure. i'm gonna steal val's question sort of but i'm gonna specify okay. ttrpg systems what other ttrpg mm. systems could you see yourself playing this character in i mean probably city of mist because City of Mist, you could probably play any character in. Um, uh, and I mean, uh, with my, with either as a druid or with a homebrew class that I work with called the Witch Doctor, I could definitely work into Dungeons and Dragons as well. So, like, it, they can go anywhere if you try hard enough. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. But yeah, for sure. Just make them fit. Yeah. Yeah. I I would be interested to see how I could pull Marcus off in something like a sci-fi setting. Um you know, any any just generic you're here, you know, Starfinder, Traveler, things like that where it doesn't have to be too heavy into it and then it's just like Ah, but here's how I, you know, Frankenstein monster this thing back from the dead because necromancy, or I can, you know, check out ghost signals. Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah, the obvious answer would be he's just a wizard in D and D, and that's boring. <laughs> so I'd rather try and challenge it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is sure. it Naneshka? I I think in the cyberpunk TTRPG she would fit in great. Um. I think in probably in City of Mist too, uh, she would have fit in pretty well. Um, 
And what else? I, I feel like you could really make any character fit into a D&D &D setting, so that's not like, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So like a big reveal, but um, yeah. Uh, what else? My brain just went blank on all TTRPG systems. Um, it, so I'd be many. interested to see how she would fit in like a, a Vampire the Masquerade setting. That's my answer as well. Could okay. could do that because um, they actually moved over uh, the Hecate clan. Yeah, so, the yeah, Hecate easy clan. answer. Because they, they also do sure a lot of ghost and necromancy. Uh, they do necromancy. Uh, she would be in, in the Hecate clan if she was a vampire, for sure. So I think Vampire I think the Masquerade was... That was my answer as well. And I, I, I think a Nazi would be... Uh, my brain immediately says Toriador, but I don't know. <laughs> I believe I don't know. it. I feel like <laughs> I believe yeah. yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Yeah, she's got to be a Toriador. Okay. I'm, I'm saying, I'm just saying that we should all this exact same group should get together and play Vampire the Masquerade. God, y'all think we're horny in this game? <laughs> Goodness <laughs> gracious! Ah. Uh... I would love, even if we went back into, because I love World of Darkness, my husband um, ran World of Darkness for the longest time, um, I would love to see a combination of all the worlds, and even in a World of Darkness system, I could see them fitting in, because there are things like, oh, Changeling is so good, Mage is so Changeling good, is so good, <sighs> Hunter is so good, um so listen if we just want to like turn this into a season of supernatural we can do that like <laughs> what? Oh my no one God. is saying it's always my jam is supernatural <laughs> what? oh now we know wild that's good wild, um wild. so you guys i believe only have two episodes left into the finale very sad oh. um well, I know this has gone crazy fast. Um, so as we're kind of getting to the end of this, what um, what do you guys hope is going to happen on the finale? What are you, what are your sort of things that you could say now so that Lydia can crush them? <laughs> I've already said Gundams. Um, I don't know what else is. Yeah, Gundams. <laughs> yeah. Gundams. <laughs> I I'm... want. Oh God! Go ahead. I I Not want a Nazi to just end the campaign happier than she started it, mm -hmm. and like hopefully like actually happier than she pretended she was at the start of it. Oh yeah. We know yeah. Sylvie wants Gundam. I mean... so what about you? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I did have it. I think I might have had an actual real <laughs> thing. Um, I would almost like a setup for 20 years later uh, for who is in the coven in the 90s and who are their who are their parents and how is the coven like kind of just God. like a, an epilogue of that like. Um, mm -hmm. like what's going on in 1999 when Y2K is about to hit y'all <laughs> like, oh my God. Man. yeah just just had us do we could just do a time heist I just want to do a time no don't don't listen to me keep going Gundams <laughs> I mean, just, just cover that up good um <laughs> I'm I'm worried about the ending because we, uh, at least as far as Marcus goes, they still don't know how to rescue uh, his soon-to-be murdered boyfriend. Um, but I do like, and I really want to see us try and do something with this Phoenix thread um, because that was very much in line with uh, what we can do to save not just him now, but uh, Sylvie's grandmother as well, potentially. So it's like there's a I'm lot of town. incentive to seek that out. That's what I'd like to see, Lydia, if you're listening. Lydia, if you're out there. <laughs> if you're out there, can <laughs> you hear to us? This. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I would... Hmm, 
I don't know. I, oof. Um, I think for Naneshka, I, I would kind of would like to see, similar to what D said for Anathi, kind of see her happy now that this, um, <laughs> this demon was quite literally just yeeted out of her. Um, <laughs> and just see her without the sleep deprivation, without the regret and the guilt, uh, and without having to worry about her town getting blown up by Illuminati. Um, and yeah, I would like to see the coven just being able to take a moment and just relax and be friends uh, and just be. Such a good, wholesome ending that would be. Um, just as a point, um, Lydia did say noted in the chat, so who oh, no. that was. <laughs> who knows? Um, but I mean, you guys thrive off of the drama and tragedy, so um, I guess we'll see what happens for the end of the great American rich, Blood Moon Rising. Um, do you guys have any last words or alibis for this Q&A before we go around and sort of say where we can find all of you? Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Wee Patel. Thank you, everyone, for creating this show. And thank you to the creators of this game for bringing these uh, <laughs> these mishmash group of people together uh, and being creating some new friendships. And I love it. Oh, I'm, I'm all for this vampire episode with the four of you. So yes. please make I, that happen. We have to do that. Uh, let, we need to just take this into a Vampire the Masquerade game. Did you hear that, Lydia? She just started yeah. another game. <laughs> <laughs> just goes with that. Yeah, um, so this has been um, Leave the Tale. Um, I am not Lydia, as you can see. I have been scribbling Penny here. Um, we're going to go around and have everybody sort of say where we can find you, what you guys are doing, um, and that sort of thing. And just kind of have a short, sweet thing tonight. And again, we'll start with the wonderful, amazing D. Uh, hi, my name is Dee. Uh, I'm a voice actor, streamer, musician, professional GM with the Emerald City Game Masters Guild. And I also am a GM with Magpie's Curated Play Program. Uh, I also play Julian in Woodsy Studios' Crimson Spires, which is a visual novel that you can pick up on Steam if you would like to try and romance a vampire version of me. Um, Outside of that, on Mondays, you can catch me here. You can also catch me over on the Critical Misses channel for uh, Kingsguard, which is a Roll20 Spotlight show. Uh, on Wednesdays, you can catch me over on the Critical Misses channel where I run Under the Pale Cold Sun, which is a Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition Chronicle. On Fridays, you can catch me over on Chaotic Pod uh, for Hidden Magics, and wherein I play the completely normal Malteon who is definitely a bard. That is their class. Nothing weird. Um, and yeah, outside of that, you can catch me on my channel where I'll do all sorts of streaming things. We stream all kinds of stuff. Kids Table, Dub Club, and uh, yeah, that's me. Man, that's crazy busy. What about you, Val? Uh, so hey y'all, I'm Val. You can find me on the internet uh, as Valdrina, um, both here on Twitch and Twitter. Um, I produce TTRPG actual plays for me and my friends. Um, and you can, we are kind of like everyone else. We're kind of coming to an end to like our winter and spring, and then going into summer soon. Uh, but right now on the channel, every Wednesdays. Uh, Wednesday mornings, I am in the DM seat where I go through my homebrew campaign of Dragonstone. Uh, my good friend Rob will D DMs Wednesday nights, also D&D &D with Revenge of the Gith. Um, on Thursday evenings, currently, my husband takes a group of adventurers, or a crew, um, which is essentially Space FedEx, through the Expanse. And on Saturdays, um, we have me and Satan play together uh, with Dragon Age. 
Um, I'm currently in uh, my Discord casting uh, for a uh, Thursday morning game, which is um, which I'm about to close probably at the end of the week, just because we've had some really good applicants, and I think my GM can do this. But it is a homebrew uh, Forge in the Dark skin called Nightmares on the Frontier, which is Wild West Eldritch Horror Fantasy, as he has described it. Um, so he's my friend Jammy is. Uh, I support all of his stuff because he's an amazing home brewer, an amazing game designer, and he actually needs to sell his things. But like, uh, so that that's a whole different story there. Um, so I am still casting for that. Those are still open. If you're interested, send me a, a DM because my Discord is invite only, just because I protect my family there. It's my house. Um, I will also be casting soon for an Animorphs Forge in the Dark skin that I will also be running. And possibly a Corol a Corolius? Corolius? However it's called. It's a science fiction game. Um, with my friend Red Mage Ray. We have been in the talks of running that on Fridays in the summer. And I think that's about it. I think I'm gonna take it easy this summer because I will hopefully be vaccinated in the next couple of weeks and I can leave my house. That would be nice. Okay. And great. <laughs> and we'll go down, Rendas. Hi, I'm Rindis of Party White Games. You can catch us most days of the week on our channel, Party White Games. Um, next time you'll see us will be tomorrow, where we play Blood of the Phoenix, a Phoenix by Night uh, Vampire the Masquerade game uh, that I am the storyteller for. Uh, also on Thursdays, we have moved uh, the recordings of Trudvang, uh, from tonight to Thursdays because of uh, quite a few scheduling conflicts. But Mitch does assure us that the uh, uploads of the videos will be coming out soon because we're we were recording just ahead of time before starting to put them out. And they should be coming out within like the next week or two. Um, and uh, Susie did the character art for everybody but my character so far, and they look phenomenal. So I can't wait to see what my... Uh, uh, also play a wizard in that game so i can't wait to see what my boy looks like uh because he had a really sad episode the last time we played so maybe it'll be a nice pick me up to get some good art uh i will be playing call of cthulhu uh on penny for a tale friday saturday we do descent into avernus a fifth edition game on my channel and then sundays we will be wrapping up our things from the flood game uh this coming week uh, they have the mission of stopping a horrible time loop and killing God. So it's basically Final Fantasy. That but that's me. <laughs> yeah. Hail Satan, kill God. That's, that's, that's our <laughs> theme today. <laughs> Perfect lead in to our resident Satan here. Hi, everyone. Uh... I am uh, Satan, as uh, Scribbles found out today on the interwebs, but also known as Alyssa <laughs> Vamp, uh, if you look for my at on Twitter. Um, and other than Mondays here with these wonderful people and the wonderful uh, GM that Lydia is, um, you can find me uh, Thursdays over at Indra Adventures playing Masks of the New Generation. Uh, it's a, a surprisingly also like a fun, but also like serious emotional game at times. Um, Saturdays, you can find me over playing at Battle Channel, where we play Dragon Age. Uh, like I've said before, if you like Horny on Main, like this show, you'll like that show. Uh, and then Saturday nights, I play over at Plot Hunters, um, where we're finishing off um, Rise of Tiamat. Sunday mornings, I DM for my friends over at uh, the Hype Goblin. It's a homebrew world. Uh, we're very uh, rule of cool and improv heavy. So if you like those type of shows, I call it my telenovela disguises a D&D game. And uh, Sunday nights, I play over at Ender Adventures again, where we're going through Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. So if you want to look at that, I play a 100% kosher beef uh, Goliath fighter. They're pretty great. Uh, but that's me. It's great. A um, couple other housekeeping things over here before we say goodnight to you guys. Um, Weave the Tale is currently um, casting for Defiant, um, which is a urban fantasy TTRPG. You will see our lovely Valderant 
playing there again. Um, so make sure you check that out on our Discord. Um, tomorrow we will have the New Auden Chronicles playing um, their finale. So come out and support them. It is going to be an amazing show. Um, Adam does a great job there. Um, other than that, um, our next season will be starting um, May the 31st next you know beginning of june type thing um so just make sure you follow us on our sh our socials if i could talk um twitter discord that sort of thing to keep an eye out for what is going to be upcoming um and guys it's going to be amazing i i know a couple of the shows that we're going to have so just make sure you stick around for those um and i'm excited to see the gundams that will be happening here on the great american witch in the finale um so thank you guys for tuning in for this q a um, next week should return to normal and you won't see this face again um you'll Aww, see the lovely lydia with her face yeah man oh, thanks. darn <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i mean i'm just gonna take over for lydia i'll just read the great american witch real quick but <laughs> yeah, even better if you just add lydia in as well mm. oh my god can you guys imagine if she was a player in this too um oh god let's let, let's let give those ideas um but i hope you guys all have a great night and thank you for tuning in these are the tales we weave tales of magic tales of mystery tales exploring the beyond, and while we continue to grow, even more adventures await in the depths of the unknown. Will you join us in the tunnels?